Good morning and welcome to the show. I have a friend of the show, and that's Valerie Sale from Bay County Animal Services. Valerie, thank you so much for coming hey. back on. And Good thank morning. you for bringing a, another friend with you. Thank you very much for having us. We're happy to be here. Now, who is that anyway? This is Charlie. Charlie was a stray, uh, picked up in a field um, a little bit ago. He's about three years old and he's all ready to go to a good home. He's had all of his shots, he's already been fixed, and uh, he's a very, very sweet, loving boy, so. Yeah, and so he's a totally healthy cat. He's a very healthy cat. He had uh, been tested already for um, uh, feline, um, HIV, Parvo and five, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, the, and so he's been tested for everything. He's good to go. Except for the tail. He failed the tail test because yeah. he doesn't have a tail. Yeah, test. he's a little bobtail cat. I'm not sure what happened to him. It's kind either. of a mystery, isn't it? Well, when they yeah. come to us, they're always such a mystery. We never yeah. know what the backstory is. So uh, he's, but he's a very sweet, affectionate kitty cat. Charlie, so. what is your story? What happened to your tail? I know. That's awful. I know, but now, he's really sweet. Now, how long does Charlie have before you have yeah. to put him down? That because because you guys are a kill shelter, right? Right. Unfor unfortunately, uh, we are. It's a harsh reality of the situation that there are so many unwanted or stray mm -hmm. animals in in Bay County, and we don't have the luxury of of not taking them. We take yeah. them all. Sure. And so uh, we try the very best we can to adopt the ones that are able to be adopted out. Um, and you know we'll we'll keep them, especially if they're highly adoptable cats or or dogs or puppies, kittens, whatever. We'll we'll keep mm -hmm. them for as long as we can, um, and try to find them a good home. So cats are a little more difficult to adopt than than yeah, dogs yeah, are, you know. Especially but, older cats. Yeah, everybody likes a kitten. One. Yeah, everybody mm -hmm. wants a kitten, but. But this guy is really calm, and he's, you know, he would make a great companion for somebody, one, you have to be a cat lover, obviously, uh -huh, but for yeah, somebody sure. maybe who's older who's looking for, for some company at home. Um, he's a lap cat. He's been in my lap all morning, so yeah. that's a good it, boy. It's, if someone wants to adopt him, who do we call? What do we do? They can uh, call Animal Services. That's 767-3333, mm -hmm. or they can go on Bay County's website, which is www.baycountyfl.gov. And there are links on the home page to animal services, and you can actually look through the animals there and um, pick one out that you like and, and make a call about it. And so, or you can always go up to the shelter, which is off of Bayline Drive mm -hmm. at 231, about 12 miles. So. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think it's interesting because there are a lot of different shelters, but you're the government-run shelter for right. the county. Right. So you take them all. Right. You know, I mean, so it's not like we take, and it's mm. interesting. We get all kinds of animals too. We'll get, we get snakes, horses, we've gotten yeah. birds before, we get all kinds of exotic animals. So it's not you just know. cats and dogs. No, it's not just cats and dogs, but um, for the most part we get cats. And, and you know, we actually get some really beautiful full-bred dogs or Siamese full-bred cats, you know, mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful animals. So um, if you're if you're looking to rescue a mutt, or if you're looking to rescue uh, one that has papers, we, we can do yeah, it that's all. That's a little but, something yeah, for everybody. We, we have to run off to the local weather, but I do want to talk more about animal services sure. and, and what you guys do in the history of it as well, and, and how it gets paid for. Sure. And we'll be right back after your local weather, brought to you by the West Pittman Law Firm. WestPittmanLawFirm.com. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Valerie Sale from Bay County Animal Services, and she's here with her friend Charlie. And, good morning. Uh, yes, yeah, so good morning. So Charlie is uh, looking for a home. Charlie is, and he is a good, sweet boy. He's been so yeah. calm and And he's well a mature cat who's already had his shots. And yep, he's about legs. three years old. He's had all of his shots. He's had all of uh, his tests done, and so he's good to go. He's a very healthy cat. Bay County Animal Services, um, you know, I, I think each county has something like that, don't they? Most of them and, do. And Some of the smaller ones to our yeah. north don't. Um, yeah. A lot of times the police department or, or sheriff's department or whatever will, will also handle uh, animal services, but, mm -hmm. but the bigger counties typically do tend to have. And this is paid for through tax dollars, right? Right. This, mm -hmm. is, this is funded uh, through uh, uh, property tax dollars and the millage rate that, mm -hmm. that people pay on their properties. And, um, you know, it is a, certainly a necessary uh, Yeah, it's in everybody's to interest to keep oh, the animals under control like oh, this. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. You'd be shocked. We, we literally get around 8,000 unwanted animals every year. Wow. 8,000. And so that number has been going down. Uh, in recent years, but um, could you get a imagine lot of them. eight thousand strays on the streets? That's exactly right. I, I mean, mean that, what would that look like? 
right. pretty terrible. Animal, our animal services folks are out mm -hmm. every single day working. Uh, we work in, in all of the municipalities with the exception of Lynn Haven. Lynn mm -hmm. Haven has their own animal control uh, department, but we, you know, we're out every day working and trying to um, not only pick up strays, but there are, there are you know, constantly problems with aggressive animals or sure, which yeah. are, those go to the top of the list if yeah, you've got a problem do with, with a dog, cat being aggressive, yeah, dogs I, the, Yeah, the, I mean, I guess there are some pets that are unadoptable, right. but you just have to do something. Oh, with right, yeah, there are some, this cat, this Charlie's is, sorry, he's, well, no, this is his fur, Char like he's shedding a little Charlie, bit, it's hot. Uh, Charlie's shedding and he's a little flatulent, but he, he is cute. No, he's a good boy. But <laughs> now, every one of these pets that are up for adoption, they're all healthy, they're fixed. Yeah. Right. Well, they well either they're fixed or, or they have to be fixed. It's state mm -hmm. law that they be fixed, uh, you know, bef when they're adopted. So um, we're actually working with Operation Spay Bay mm -hmm. uh, to get these animals uh, spayed or neutered before they're adopted out. And so that has been really helpful for the county and helpful for us getting those oh, adoption great. numbers up. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great organization and really it's so important for people to spay and neuter their it pets. It is, because it, it mean, really is inhumane uh, yeah. to let them just breed uh, uh, Yeah, you know, indiscriminately. It's, it, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's really terrible. And I, I don't mm -hmm. understand um, why we have to impress that so much. It seems pretty it seems simple. It pretty basic. <laughs> yeah, but, but if I were to adopt, say, Charlie or, or another animal, mm -hmm. um, it would cost me what, twenty five dollars? Twenty five dollars. Like yeah, yeah, it's twenty five uh, bucks to adopt a pet, and so and a healthy um, pet. A, a pet healthy, who's yeah, and mm -hmm. you know that's that's a great deal, and um, that's one of the ch one of the many changes we've implemented at Animal Services within the last year or so. Mm -hmm. uh, the adoption fee used to be seventy five dollars, and and we actually had uh, Maddie Shelter from uh, UF's uh, Veterinary School come in and do an analysis of our operations there and help us. Uh, kind of figure out what some of some better practices would be and one of their suggestions was to reduce the adoption yeah. fee which we've done and then we've implemented a whole host of other things uh, to try and ensure the animals health and and uh, just make overall make things better and it's really been working and the county commission has has really been uh, committed to to helping us uh, you know solve some of the problems that we have not only at the shelter but yeah. but community-wide as far as getting animals adopted out and encouraging people to spay and neuter their pets. Well it's important to spay and neuter those pets and it's also it important so. to adopt a pet instead of buying one yeah. go, go down to the animal services. And, and nobody loves you like a shelter pet we always Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Valerie Sale thank you so much for bringing Charlie on the show. Thank you. And I uh, hope uh, you clean up your diet a little. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be, oh he's a good boy. <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> after your Mad Hatter Minute. I'm David Lovett, and this is your Mad Hatter Minute. Your life literally rides on your tires, and tires are not cheap. To maximize your auto investment dollars, you need to be rotating the tires. After thousands of miles of driving, you have uneven tire wear. Rotating the tires equalizes the natural tread wear patterns by changing the position of the tires. By rotating the tires regularly, you'll ensure a smoother, safer ride. Look at the sidewall of your tire. If there's arrows pointing in one direction, you have directional tires. You cannot take directional tires moving from the, from the left to the right or the right to the left. They are designed to go in one way. You can rotate them from the front to the back and the back to the front. That's all. Non-directional tires are easier. They can be rotated from, from the left to the right, the right to the front, from the front to the back, from the back to the front. Rotate them in a crisscross pattern to ensure even tire wear. And don't forget the, the, the spare tire. If you have a full-size spare, the full-size spare needs to be included in the rotation. How often should you rotate your tires? Well, to be for certain, check your owner's manual. Your owner's manual will also tell if that the, the vehicle originally came with directional or non-directional tires. Most manufacturers recommend re rotating the tires every 5,000 miles. A good rule of thumb is every other oil change. I am David Lovett, and that has been your Mad Hatter Minute. Hey folks, this is Joshua Brown with Mad Hatter on 23rd Street. Is your check engine light on? If it is, text M-A-D-H-A-T-28, that's Mad Hat 28, to 24247, and we'll check it for free. Welcome back to the show. I have Heather Noyes here in the studio from Raymond James Financial. 
and I tripped over that because I just had dental surgery, but welcome. <laughs> Thanks <laughs> for the, having me. <laughs> the market, is, there's a little retraction now going on, isn't there? Or yes. is it a big retraction? What's going on? Um, it's not a huge retraction, but I mean, mm -hmm. we're definitely due for a little bit of a breather. But I did mm -hmm. want to kind of bring to light that the pullback that we're having is something that's normal, really, mm -hmm. and it wasn't really driven by fundamentals of the economy, but more driven by some of the geopolitical events that are going on. So Russia, Ukraine, mm -hmm. Argentina, there's lots of different things that Middle East, it. Absolutely. the gift that keeps on giving, yes. Absolutely. So, and we think that there might be a little bit more pullback from here. Um, but I wanted to point out that we're in the middle of what we call a secular bull market, which lasts about 12 to 15 years. Secular bull market. Right. Okay. So bull market means it's right. going up. Because and a bull, when it gores you, throws you up in the air. Absolutely. And a bear <laughs> drags you down. Got it. That much right. I understand about economics. Right, okay. right. So yeah. we're in the middle of a secular bull market. We're about five years into it. And typically about five years in, you get a little bit of a breather. Mm -hmm. So nothing to really be alarmed about. I think right now would be a good time to add um, any cash that maybe you have uh, into the market is a good buying time right now. Oh. But then still anticipate another, probably another good 10 years of, of a bull market. Oh, so, you know, so this is really just a temporary downturn or a natural retraction is what I'm hearing. And, Absolutely. And it may be a good time to amp it up a little bit. Absolutely. Um, and I did, I did bring a slide that I thought I would share with you guys today, too. Yeah, can you tell uh, us what's going on with that? It talks about market timing because sometimes mm -hmm. you get, uh, people get fidgety right now. They get nervous. They may panic. They may want to get out of the market completely. I've had a couple of those calls in the past week myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting out of the market completely can actually cost you a lot of money over time. So looking at this slide, actually, if um, this shows over the last 20 years that if you had stayed fully invested in the market for those 20 years, that you would have garnered yourself about a 9.2% return. Now, if you missed just the 10 best days in the market, just 10 mm -hmm. out of the 20 years, you now have dropped your return down to about 5.5%. Wow. And then also, if you missed the top 20 days in the market, now you've only earned yourself about 3%. Best 30 days, you're almost down to zero. If you miss the best 40 days, you're losing, you're down 1%. And if you miss, missed the best 50 days in the market, you're down almost 3%. So if, if, if you get scared and you pull your market out, even if it's just a month, you're gonna lose money. You can't. If, if you Absolutely. get those days wrong, Absolutely. which stand, unless you're a financial genius, is really hard to time Right, that. market timing is very difficult. Now, mm -hmm. in some cases, it you know it has saved people money when they pulled out of the market. Uh, the biggest problem is actually getting back into the market, knowing when to get back in, because these things whipsaw back really quickly, and you could miss you know a 10% run in just a few days. Wow, that, th those are amazing returns. So. I, I guess the, the lesson is, you know, you really have to stay in for the long haul and maybe just make little tweaks to it rather than just jump out and jump back in. Absolutely. So long-term investing is, is very key. Uh, starting early, whether we've talked about that several times, mm -hmm. um, even if it's a small amount of money, starting early is going to make a big difference for you in the long run. And um, we're hosting actually three seminars this month that yeah, I thought I'd I was gonna, invite. I was going to add number three, and above all, leave it to the professionals <laughs> to manage that for you. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So we have three different seminars. Uh, there's for the next three Thursdays in a row, mm -hmm. uh, the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th. Mm -hmm. uh, two are at G Foley's and one is at Bonefish. So if they want more information on that, they can give us a call at our office. Okay, and your number is? 785-9614. 75-9614, Raymond James Financial, Heather Noyes, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. And getting us smart on our investments. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. With the advent of a lot of genealogy shows and history shows, people are becoming more interested in their family histories. Well, I have someone here in the studio today who's been interested in her family history since 1968. Carol Atkinson, thank you so much for coming well, on the show. Thank you for having it's, me, Don. You know, a lot of people know you uh, in Bay County as a former county commissioner and all the other things you've you've done over the years in Bay County, but I don't think many people know that you are a, a, a no kidding a genealogist and historian. Well, it's I started in 1968. All my grandparents and my husband's grandparents were alive. Mm -hmm. And they were at the age when they wanted someone, they wanted to tell their stories to a grandchild, 
or to somebody that would listen. And I would listen. And so I got, I had the opportunity to sit with my grandmother. My grandfather was senile at that, by mm -hmm. then, but she had all the stuff and she t told the stories. And I got to sit with both my husband's sets of grandparents and listen to their stories and their telling about coming from here and going there and the war stories. Um, mm -hmm. My grandmother on my grandmother's side, on my father's family, there were 17 children in that family. They had three who enlisted in the First World War wow. and four in the Second World War. Their children were so spaced out. We all hear these family stories. Mm -hmm. And over time, as generations age and pass on, we kind of lose a lot of them. And a lot of it's kind of, it's, it's told second and third hand. And it loses a lot of it. It, it gains and loses both. It, it, well, that's true, too. Yes. Oh, it yes. gains the, it, you know. the teller always becomes bigger yeah. in the telling of the stories. It, well, I was, see, I, again, in 1968, I got my grandmother to write me a story about each one of her five children. And she got her brothers and sisters to write a story called Growing Up with Mama and Papa. And their parents moved around, so some of them grew up in one place in Colorado and some of them grew up in another place. And so, and as their parents aged, they became different people. So the perceptions of Mama and Papa are different from the oldest to the youngest. Now we have these oral histories, which are, you know, subject to interpretation, but you actually <laughs> wrote a book or several books, and we have to run off to a break right now. But, you know, this is a monumental work. When you look at the things that you have in here, the old photographs, the birth certificates, I even saw a Cub Scout MasterCard, family trees. I mean, this is a no kidding. I mean, it's not even my family, and I'm interested in it. So maybe on the other side of these messages, you can give us some tips on how we can all get started in doing I sure this. I can, I'll be glad to. And we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to the show. I'm here with a very fascinating friend of mine, Carol Atkinson, who is a genealogist. And if you just get a quick look at, at what we're doing over here, this is just amazing stuff that she's put together, this genealogy of her family. And I know this is years of work and study. How does someone like, say, me or someone who's watching now, how can they get involved in this? And how can you start researching your you family? You start too? with the simplest person that you know the most about, yourself. Okay, I'm a pretty simple person. Yeah. Person, and then mm -hmm. you go back to your mother and your father, mm -hmm. and their parents, and their children, and their parents and their children. And in the United States, it's not as hard as if you're working overseas because the United States has censuses. Yeah. And from 19 from 1790. To 1840, all the census had in it was the name of the household. Now, if you're if you're like me and you're only like third generation American, you know what happens when you uh, hit that barrier of okay, now they came from somewhere else. Maybe your history's in another language. Well, a lot of it's been translated, mm -hmm. and a lot of it's done. I, almost every family I have goes way back on one line and stops at three or four or five generations on the other. Now, can and I, I, yeah. This isn't an ad for Ancestry.com, but no. I, I understand that this is a product of that. that this you, is product of Ancestry.com. Uh -huh. And you've actually used that as a tool. Yeah. I know you started way before Ancestry.com. I just started com. before computers. I know. When I know. you had to write a letter and enclose a self-address, stamped envelope, uh -huh, to get and, your stuff back. and hoping that the person you were writing to had a clue. But Ancestry.com is probably an easy place to start. It right? is an easy place to start. And they do all the hard work for you. They tie you to your mother and dad and your grandparents and all that stuff together. And you don't have to remember who's who. And if you go find a person in the middle of the generation, you can print a family group sheet or print an Ancestry chart just by being there. And if you have grandparents or great grandparents or, or even elderly parents that are still around, probably a good time to sit down and talk with them and I pick was, their yes, brains. I was very lucky. I mm -hmm. started early and, uh, and I had all the grandparents, my husband's grandparents and my grandparents were all alive and they told me stories and I wrote them down and they were so happy somebody would listen to them. And over time, you know, it's one thing to get a, a, a family tree like this and then you can see, you know, how, who was who. But when you unearth something like this, when you've got a, uh, uh, 
uh, you know, an actual photograph of your yes. ancestors, that's what's really fascinating. And, and everybody out there in the genealogical community will help you. Carol Atkinson, we're so out of time, it's not funny. And this is such fascinating stuff. We could do a whole show on this. But thank you so much for coming on well, the show and getting us smart on ancestry. And, and the local genealogy society meets at the library on the third Saturday of every month. Oh, how do we get in touch with them? Uh, just show, just up, at show up at the library. I think they meet at 1 o'clock, but you might call the library and ask. And there's plenty of help at the library all day long, every day, in the history area, because most of them are also genealogists. There you have it, Bay County Library. Start your genealogy now. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.